you are into movies and movie related discussions, you come to the right place. Who am I to ask? I am the Wiz. Yes, yes, I know. No one else is here. Uh, I, I know what you're asking. Um, hey, Wiz, where are the people that I like? I mean, what's going on here? Like, uh, first off, jerk. What the hell? That's not right. Secondly, I'm going to do uh, a review a week now by myself. I'm going to start watching movies that uh, yeah, I really want to watch, but. You know, I can't really convince the other two to get to right now, so I'm going to watch some uh, interesting movies that I've been wanting to watch for a while now. And I am starting this off with one of the best Hitchcock movies ever made, and it's the 1958 movie Vertigo, starring James Stewart and Kim Novak. Vertigo has been considered one of, if not the best Hitchcock movie ever made, I know the most popular one is Psycho, followed by The Birds, I think. Don't quote me on that, but definitely Psycho is probably his most popular one. Vertigo is the one that keeps getting into top 10 lists of the best films ever made. I believe before Jean Delman took it over on the BFI list, Vertigo is number one. I, I th I'm fairly certain about that. Uh, don't Again, don't quote me on that, but it was in the top 10 at least. And it's a movie that has been on my bucket list, and I have wanted to watch it, so I thought, eh, you know what, why not? I'm going to give this movie a shot, and I don't have to convince uh, Kim or Zero to go ahead and watch it with me. I'm going to take this opportunity to do it now. So, why don't I get into my review of Vertigo, starring James Stewart and Kim Novak, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. The first thing I want to talk about is direction, because the direction in this movie is excellent. Oh my god, this is probably the best movie that Hitch has ever directed, I think. In terms of visuals and the way that the film is blocked, it is exquisitely shot. I watched this on a Blu-ray that I think is about roughly 10 years old, and I could still see how vibrant the colors were, how it pops on the screen. It was beautiful to watch. Even like the skin tones of the actors, and the clothes they wear, and the rooms that they were in were just vibrant and beautiful. I couldn't believe what I was watching. If there's one thing with Hitch that I, I've seen in most of his films, is that he knows how to place a shot well, but they're not really lookers. Uh, I watched uh, North by Northwest, I think a few months ago, I believe, and as much as I did like the film, the, the way it was shot didn't really blow me away really it was it was good for its time but it wasn't you know it wasn't great this movie looks amazing i could not believe the visuals of this movie it was stunning to watch and then the way that the film is when it comes to uh, blocking a lot of the key scenes in this movie you're going to notice is that buildings loom large throughout the film they're they're just idly by in the background in, in key scenes of the movie and that has a lot to do with the main character of the film, which I'll get to when I get to the writing part. But, man, like, the way that this film is just shot is really good. It's probably one of the, in terms of visuals, probably one of the best directed films I have ever seen. Uh, I, I don't know who the cinematographer is, but he did a fantastic job with this movie with Hitch as well. It was really, visually, it is a, a breathtaking movie to watch. Well, I'm saying that bearing in mind that this is in uh, from the 50s, but even then, like just the way that it was shot was amazing. I, I I can't get enough of how gorgeous the movie looks. Even like small rooms, like Midge's room, looks visually appealing. I, I can't get enough of how great this movie looks. It, it, for that alone is a recommendation just to watch this film. It is gorgeous to look at. Let's get into performances. Uh, performances, uh, I think, that were actually very good. Uh, James Stewart was good as the main character. He, he puts in a good performance in this. He, he, he does his James Stewart-like stuff that he usually does in other films, like uh, Anatomy of a Murder and uh, movies like that. I still think Anatomy of a Murder is probably uh, is his best one. But this was a pretty good performance as well in this. Very charming, but also kind of dark in a way, but it still works very well for James Stewart in this. He does a very good performance in this movie. I also want to point out uh, Barbara Belgetti's as his friend Midge in this movie. I, I thought she was charming, and I wanted to see more of her. And then after the second act of the film, she's gone, which kind of sucked. But I actually liked her character quite a bit, even though it was kind of like a throwaway character. It was, it was kind of cute, and I actually liked her character and how she did mention this movie. 
But I think the best performance of the movie is Kim Novak. She does an excellent job as the femme fatale of the movie. Or is femme fatale really the right word for this woman? I'm not entirely sure. But she is the principal person that is involved in the crime and the love interest to a certain extent in the film. And she pulls off this performance really well. And, and she does it in, in another way as well, which I will get to in spoilers. But I, I think her performance is by far the best of, the, of this movie. I, I hear a lot of people like to praise James Stewart in this movie, but I have to say Kim Novak has got the best performance in this movie. Bar none. So let's get into the writing. Let's get into what the movie is about. I probably should have did that first, but we're, we're here at writing right now. So the movie is about a cop played by James Stewart who retires after he learns that he has a, a fear of heights and has a serious case of vertigo, which led to a fellow cop getting killed on the scene by falling to his death. What happens is he retires and he doesn't know what he's doing and then his friend contacts him to spy on his wife. And the wife is played by Kim Novak. Kim Novak's character, Madeline, is having some sort of mental issues where she goes into a fog and she goes into weird places and doesn't really understand where she's going or why or whether she was there in the first place. It's really weird and it, it with the writing itself, it deals with mental illness as a plot device which actually was entertaining though I, I will say this right off the bat it's not particularly sensitive to people's mental health in this they kind of treat both characters like they have something seriously wrong with them when they're just dealing with trauma if you're looking for that type of dive into mental health you're not getting that to a certain extent especially with Kim Novak's character I would say they kind of treat her character like she's got real serious issues. Not that she's problems, but like, what a weirdo to a certain extent. If you are triggered by that a little bit, maybe not watch this. But other than that, if you are okay with watching something like that and realizing it's just part of its time, then I would say definitely give this a shot. The, 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 the way that the film runs in this is actually really good. It makes the plot very interesting when it gets to the crime part of the movie. I think this is one of Hitchcock's most engaging films. This is about over two hours long, and I was not bored once. And the fact that this film has so many different twists as the film goes on, uh, the vast majority of them work. They are actually really good in this. I, I definitely like where the film it went throughout the entire plot. I really like the way that the film flowed, and that it didn't feel like the film slowed down at all. Like I was constantly entertained, really enjoying myself, even though I had a rather sizable issue, which I will get into spoilers, but overall the plot and the way the film is written, I think was really well done. I actually really like everything. I like a lot about this film, but I will get into the one thing I had a problem in spoilers, which I will get into right now. So spoilers is going on right now for Vertigo, the 1958 film directed Alfred Hitchcock, and starring Kim Novak and James Stewart. If you have not watched it, stop here and come back when you're ready. I'll get the spoilers in five, four, three, two, one. Again, these are spoilers. I'm gonna spoil the third act of the film. So if you want this to be a surprise throughout, stop here. Okay, so here's what happens. End of the second act of the film, Kim Novak's character, Madeline, plunges to her death in a suicide. And James Stewart's character witnesses the fall after he realizes he's in love with her. What ends up happening is that James Stewart's character has a mental episode. He gets hospitalized. He basically is going through a lot of problems. But then the third act happens, and that's washed away. He's back on the streets. He just so happens to catch a glance of a woman who is also played by Kim Novak. And he follows this woman to her apartment. Yes, creepy. I know. It's, but... For some reason, it works. Just go with me on this one. It turns out the reason why James Stewart's character is following Kim Novak's character, not Madeline this time, but her name is Judy. He's following Judy, who is also played by Kim Novak, because Ke that woman reminds her of Madeline, the person that he was in love with, that plunged to his death, that he's having a hard time getting over. I thought the way that this film was going to go is that James Stewart's character was going to have a psychotic break, mistaking this character for the character who died, and is going to have serious mental issues 
issues that he has to get over while still developing this relationship and this romance with Judy, who is played by Kim Novak. The problem is that's not what happens. Once this third act starts, the film pretty much tells you what exactly is going on, which is that Judy, who is played by Kim Novak, is actually Madeline from the beginning of the movie. But as it turns out, Judy was playing a, a ruse on James Stewart's character by pretending to be Madeline so that his friend that he was helping spy on his wife with, his friend could kill his actual wife and give them an alibi as to what was going on. The, the person that Kim Novak's playing, Judy, in the third act is actually deceitful to James Stewart's character. And basically, instead of building up that tension to see what's going on, what's happening, and then the twist happened, they let you know right away what's going on, which I think is a mistake. Now, and the reason why I'm saying this is because it reminded me a lot of what happened in Psycho at the end of the movie. For those of you who haven't seen Psycho, spoilers on this one. If you haven't, I don't know why, but spoilers, okay? At the end of the film of Psycho, learn that the person that is killing everybody in the film is not Norman Bates's mom, but it's Norman Bates dressed in drag pretending to be his mom. That part I don't mind in in Psycho. It actually works very well. What I did not like, and I think a lot of people would agree with me on this one, is the last five minutes of the film, where for some strange reason, there's an exposition scene where a psychologist goes over everything that's going on with Norman Bates to a, a point where it almost seems like it doesn't trust the audience to figure it out for themselves, which I always felt was a, a bad move on that one. But then again, that was in like in 54, I think, Psycho was. So in that case, I can understand maybe a lot of people weren't really well-versed in mental health, so maybe Maybe that's the reason why, but to me, it kind of it is a, a black mark on an otherwise excellent movie. I'm having that same problem with Vertigo as well, because I really think if they would have just kept that hidden and then at the end reveal it that James Stewart's figured out what's happened, then that would have been an excellent twist. But they don't do that. They reveal that in the beginning of the third act, and it kind of ruins that twist a little bit. But what I will say is this. It doesn't hurt the movie overall. What the film then does is basically frame the film as in, will James Stewart's character figure out what's going on with Judy, which is Kim Novak in this character? It's interesting to the to where they go with it, but I would have vastly preferred them keeping that twist hidden. Like the way that they reveal the twist, which Judy is actually Madeline, how they reveal that is through voiceover. And voiceover can work fine in some circumstances, but in this, it just felt like it was tacked on. And it really hampered, I think, what would have been a better way to do that scene, to, to do the twist in that movie. But does it hurt the movie overall? Not necessarily. I still think this is a great movie. I really thought they should have done it a different way, but they didn't. But oh well. Uh, w what they did was actually very good in the end of the movie that James Stewart reveals it and something happens in the end. He gets over his uh, vertigo. But man, I would have really preferred it to go the other way that I was thinking. But oh well, that's what happens in that, in that end. Okay, so let me get into my final thoughts of the film. Overall, I, I think it's easy to see why this is considered Hitchcock's best film. It is shot real well. It has great performances. And it is an entertaining film with many themes that I really wasn't expecting it to go through in this movie. It doesn't do it particularly sensitively, but I think it's still uh, very interesting. I think Kim Novak's performance is the best in this performance fall in this movie, followed by James Stewart. I thought he was very good in this as well. Of the few Hitchcock films I've seen, this is my third favorite. Rebecca is still number one. I think Rebecca is the best one. And then Notorious is two, and now I would say Vertigo is three. This could have been a five-star film for me, but it's going to be a four, and I'm going to put it right on the third act. Because I really think they would have had something special if they would have got rid of the voiceover and let the audience figure out for themselves what's going on. But even then, it is still a really entertaining movie. I really enjoyed Vertigo, and if you haven't seen it, I would say give it a shot. Rent it whenever you can. I'm going to give Vertigo four stars. It is an entertaining film, and I, I'm glad I finally got to watch it. It's such a great movie. I just had one minor quibble, but again, great movie. Vertigo, four stars. Definitely see it again.